Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mbarak and I welcome you to our second lecture of creating a complete uh, hotel management system using uh, plain PHP and my SQL. So uh, if this is your first lecture, uh, we always do 40 minutes, so I'll go ahead and start my timer. So if this is your first lecture, I will recommend you to go to my YouTube channel and you find the very first uh, video. So to go to my YouTube channel, just simply go to YouTube and then search uh, my channel, which is Learn It with Mohindo. And then go ahead and click on uh, this channel. Uh, you should mute your microphone, guys. Okay, so uh, go ahead and click on uh, playlist. Then you'll find the playlist that is right for you. So this is the first video that we made. So if uh, you have not watched it, I recommend you to first watch it in order to be on the same page with us. This first video, you'll see it here. Hello, Hello and how are you? So uh, with that much said, let's go straight into today's business and get started. So yesterday we were able to set up our project and um, you can f you, you, we can find it here under Hotel Pro. So that's the project that we are doing and we're able to create here the login page. So when you click there, you're able to access that login page. So I hope uh, you were able to reach at that point depending on the first video and the things that I shared in the first video. I, able, um, I hope you're able to reach at this particular point. So as I told you, as a programmer, it is not good to repeat yourself. So I'm going to show you how we can do what, how we can, uh, how we can uh, create a reusable components. For example, in yesterday's lecture, we said uh, things like uh, this field. We are going to need them so much, things like a username and the rest, we need them so much. So it is good we create functions that we shall be just giving parameters, then it returns for us this interface, like this interface, a common interface like this one, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so to do that, I'll just simply come to my project. As you can see, I've already opened my project, and here it is, okay? So yesterday, we created our function this function uh, file and then in this function file we make sure that on top of it we are starting the what uh, the session as you can see here now uh, so we created our first function there it's called text input and it is taking parameters okay and then it is returning just here some data like you can see here so if I come to our register.php, which is the file that we want to use, I can go ahead, for example, on top of this, I can go ahead and call that function. Here, you see, I can just simply go ahead and call this function. Then you see it is returning. Uh, it will be returning. Sorry, I'm not in the... Yeah, this is the register screen. So you see it is returning here, something called some data. So I'm going to replace this data with the real HTML that we are viewing at this moment. Okay, I'm going to replace this data with the HTML that we want to view here. So to do so, I'll just simply come and cut this. Okay, cut this. Okay, so if I refresh, you'll see that uh, that first input has disappeared. So let me go to this function of... Uh, text input which is this one here so i'm just going to return the other data that i was displaying i mean this thing that i've just cut okay i'm just going to return this field so that when i call this uh input it should be returning that html so we shall reuse that again and again so that we can know we, to avoid a repetition of work so i can just simply put here single colon and then i return it like this okay i can just go ahead and return it like that all right, so if I go ahead and refresh, if I go ahead and refresh, you'll see that it is now we're achieving, we are now achieving uh, the same thing. We're achieving the same thing. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do right now, uh, we're going now to start substitute there things. However, there is a technique that we can use. Uh, here it's called EOT. It's called EOT, end of file. This is how you use it. 
for example, I can say maybe uh, um, view or what you're going to return, then say equals to, and then you do like this e o t, and then you end it like how I don't know I don't know how to end it even uh -huh. Uh -huh. so that's how you end it so you see I'm just I'm just uh, doing like this uh, I just open this I, pre I, I create three 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 what three less than signs and then I put the word EOT and then I press next and then I put there in HTML in simple way you can see I'm able to put there in HTML. So let me just get this HTML that we are using and then I remove this one that was suggested by Copilot. Okay, so you just put there your plain HTML. So this is one of the way of how you can write uh, HTML in PHP. So you see I'm writing HTML in PHP. Okay, so you can try that. So um, I'm saving this data in this view so I can go ahead and return it like this. So I just simply say return and then return that view. Hope you can see that. So by doing so, by doing so, if I come and refresh, you'll see that you are getting the same result. Okay. Now we want to make this dynamic. We want to make this dynamic. For example, there are things that are going to change depending on the fields. For example, I'm going to check, I'm going to check, I'm going to, I need this label to change because someone will send, we are going to reuse this, what? We are going to reuse this, um, this field. So I want this label to change, okay? So if I want it to change, I can just simply uh, go ahead and implement the uh, logic. So I can say my label text, okay? Label, uh, text, label. So this label, by default, I can make it nothing, okay? I can make it empty, or I can make it maybe filled, okay? Filled, something like this. Okay, so let me go ahead and replace it here. So where there is email or username, I'm going to replace it here. So to substitute a, a variable in this EOT, okay? You just simply put it there. So let me cut this. So you see, now this label is going to replace here. You see, I have here the word field. Hope you can see that. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, I want to be passing that field in these parameters. Okay. So let me go back to my register, which is here. So this is the place where I'm calling the input. So I'm going to, this is how you pass an array. Okay. So I'm going to pass, I say, label. I hope that's the name that you're using. Label. Is it label or, I don't know. I think it is E at the end, okay? Let's use E at the end, okay? It should be label, something like that. Okay, so use the E at the end. So you see here, um, I've just put a square sign, square brackets, and then I'm passing label, and then I point at email or username. So when I do like this, it means that I'll have passed this data to this form, okay? But if I refresh, you'll see that nothing is changing. Why nothing is changing is because I've not done the logic of presenting it. So let's go back to our input field. This is the input field. What I'm going to do, I'm going to check if this is an array. Because sometimes sometime someone may not send an array. So if someone does not send an array, so we may end up doing what? We may end up uh, uh, having errors. So to check if it's an array, to check if a parameter is an array, you can just simply say if is array is is array check it like this if is array so i'm going to check if this one is an array then i should be able to get the label okay so uh this is the label remember here so i'm going to replace it with what will have come in the label but before i do so before i do so i'm going to check if this label is set okay so to do so you can just simply say if is set sometimes someone will not send the label okay so I, that's how i check it i just check if is set and then I open the bracket i say parameter and then i pass the label so if it is set i go ahead and get this text out word of ours and i make it to be this label 
then after I come and put it here. So if I do like this, you'll see that username and password, I mean username or email has been what? Has been sent there. So that is how you check if something is set. All right, so we proceed. Uh, we proceed. Now, there is a, a way how you can do, do this in, uh, in one line. So you can do this in one line by just simply saying label equals to then you just simply put is set okay is set and then you put a question mark let me explain it okay so just simply say label is set then you pass what you want to check this one here okay so if it is true it will do the first thing here if it is not true, I'm going to make it to be the same as the first one. So that is how you can do something in one line and say, so if, the, if this is true, if this condition is true, you can use this in many ways. So if this condition is, is true, it will do this first thing. If it is not true, it will do the second thing. So I'm saying if the label is true, you should go ahead and get the label that will have sent to us. If it is not true, you should go ahead and return it to what it was originally. So by doing like that, we'll be able to achieve the same thing. So you see now, I'll have optimized in a way that now if I need just an input, I just simply say echo input, and then I go ahead and say and pass the label and just put the email. So I can just simply put here uh, email maybe or phone. So you see, if I say email or phone, you see, it will automatically go ahead and change this. So by doing like that, we shall be able to... We shall be able to do us to dynamically use our what our component so those are the techniques that you'll need as a web developer so we proceed so there are more things there are more of a dynamic fields that you're going to put there uh, so we have the label so another thing that might change is the is the what is the um, id okay is the id okay is that ID for example you see this is the ID so uh, okay so before you come to an ID we shall need a name of this field okay a name of this field so uh, let us go ahead and just simply put a name maybe let us make a name uh, to be required because there is no field that can be used without a name so let me go ahead and check if a name is not set uh, so let me just put here and say else okay so else I throw an exception. So if it is not an array, I go ahead and throw an exception and say invalid parameter. So it will throw an error if it will show an error if uh, th this is not an array. So it must be an array. It must be array. So you can just either die or you can just simply throw a, an a exception like this. Okay. Now, I'm going to check if the name is, is not set. So that is going to be our first condition because every field must have a name. So if the name is not set, so let me put here name to be null, to be null by default. So if name is not set, I'm just going to throw an error. So how do you do that? You just simply say, so I go ahead and get the name. So that is the name. Okay, so I just I've just done the same thing that we've done that we did here the label. Okay, I've just done the same thing. So I'm going to check if name is null, I should throw an error. So I'll come here and the bottom here and say if name is what is null, I throw an error, name is required. So the name of a field must be required. So if I come here and refresh, you'll see that I'm getting an error. That name is what? Name is required. Okay. So it means that a name must be provided. Okay. So Let's go ahead and you can see, you can pause the video and see how I've achieved that. So let's go ahead and substitute now the name. So the name can work as an ID because it's going to be unique. So I'll just go ahead and remove this email and replace it with the name variable and then replace the ID here with the name variable and come here and replace the name as the name variable. Because in a form, a name must be there and it must be one. So by doing like that, we shall have worked on that. So let's come here and pass the name. So I'll come to the register and then go ahead and pass the name. So this name can be maybe 
let's just pass username okay maybe username or can pass email something like that so that's going to be a unique field there so if i go ahead and refresh you'll see the error will disappear if i come here and inspect you'll see that if i inspect i'll be able to see that the name the name is what is username and it has been marked as an id so here it's the name the name is here name is here the id is here so what we passed it has been replaced there so those are the techniques that you need when you're programming so we can proceed to another thing so let us look at another field that we may need to change here is the is the input type okay so we are doing this thing only one time once we finish uh, once we finish doing this then we shall just reusing this field we shall keep on reusing this field uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, and and just uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just put here type so type uh, by default we can make it to be text okay be text so let's go ahead and check if type is set also if type is set we get it here if it is not set we make it back to type so by default it will be text so you may ask yourself how am i going how am i how am i getting these suggestions so if you watch the first video you'll see the extension that i talked about that will help you to suggest all these things that i'm doing right now i just write one line and it just automates the remaining okay so if you want to do that if you want to know how that one works watch the first video so that is how we get the type so what i'm going to do I'm going to come here and replace this type so that's how we're going to have a dynamic field so for the remaining of the project things are going to be very simple we're not going to suffer so i'll replace here the type so what else are we remaining with uh so maybe i can just simply put here and say enter and then i put enter the label okay I'll enter the label so it will replace here like that so enter the label i can make it not to auto focus okay so let's go ahead and uh, refresh so if i come here and refresh you'll see that i have here enter uh, the label okay enter the label something like that okay we can just uh finish the last part of it by doing what by entering the the value uh by putting the value because value is very important so you can be able to resume with the data something like that uh so how are we going to do that uh there is a logic that i think of so first of all we can make the value to be null so value can be null okay so we're going to be keeping our things in the session okay so we're going to be checking that if there is a value of a certain field if there is a value of a certain field and it has refresh should be able to resume something like that it should be able to resume so how are we going to do that we can do that by just simply say remember here we've already started the session so we can just simply come here and say uh, we can be keeping all our form values in the session of the parameter of of form okay so i'm going to check here if is set and then i'm going to put here uh, session okay so if it's set session i'm going to put here a parameter called uh, form okay form okay so i'm going to first check if the form session is set so after checking that the next thing that i'm going to do i'm going to check if the value of this name is set so this is how you do it you just simply say value equals to if is set so here i'm just checking if there is a form in a session so a session is a storage where you can uh keep some you can, you can keep things and when if you refresh the things will be restored okay so i first check if there is a session of form or i can just simply let's call it form data so it can be a little bit unique okay let's call it just form I can call it form data i don't know yeah form data let's call it form data so i'm just going to say if the the the, the session of form is set form data is set i go ahead and check if there is a value and then i pass the name of this field because i know the name of this field will always be unique so if it is there i go ahead and receive it from the what from the session here you see i receive from the session and i set it to be whatever is in the session otherwise if it is not there i set it back to null something like that okay so we can do that we can do that uh -huh. now uh sometime data might come uh we might need to force there the data from the form okay 
from the form or maybe through the parameters so we can also do the same so the one which comes from the parameter with the parameters it should be able to, re to override the one that is in the session so i check so this one is on top here and then this is the second here so this is going to override this one in case there is the value here otherwise to remain the way it is here so after getting this value i'm just going to come here and give another parameter of what of value equals to open bracket and then put the value something like this so by doing like that we should be able to receive the values that of something that we are set so if i come and refresh here you'll see everything is okay now if i come back if i come back i mean can we leave here to focus auto focus maybe you can leave it there so um uh, it will be auto focusing Mm, yep maybe you can leave that one there or maybe you can just let's 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 add the logic so you can finish everything at once okay so um now uh, if i come here let's test the value part so if i come here and i pass value value equals to maybe username okay something like that so here you see it is enter username so if i do go and refresh you see the value has come as username it is the real data that has come but we, can, we are not going to use this one for here and if there is any value in the form data in the session it will automatically uh, do the same thing so let me uh, go ahead and also get the maybe you can we may need to add here some classes we may need to add some classes something like that so let's go ahead and do so so let's go ahead and put here classes equals to null by default okay so go ahead and check if here uh, the classes are set so we check if here the classes are set just the same technique we go ahead and add these classes next to the form here so if there are some classes you see they'll add automatically next to the form here so it means that if we want to implement classes let's say that we want to add more classes here we can just simply come here and say so you see it is taking much of our time but it will be worth it uh it will be worth it when we start reusing it okay so if i if i come here and say i just simply put classes i can just simply put for example uh bg danger see that's a class that's going to be added there so if i come and refresh you see here it has automatically changed to danger so something like that all right so lastly what we're going to do there what we're going to do as a last thing uh let's go ahead and get maybe error uh error let's go ahead and display error so let's go ahead and display error so if there is an error the form should be able to cry maybe show something like green color i think that's the last thing that we're going to do here then when i finish i'm going to explain all of them at once so let's go ahead and do that so to do the logic of error so to do the logic of error just simply come here and make error to be null okay to be null all right so uh first of all you can have uh errors in uh through the sessions something like that um i think yes uh yeah we, let's do that uh so let's go ahead and check form errors maybe this is form data you can go ahead and check if there is in the session there is form error so just simply do the same thing here only that we shall remove this and put error okay so it will remain the same logic so just make this one plural from errors something like uh that so you just save this one as an error okay so uh let's go ahead and also do it here maybe we can be able to receive also the error from here so we just do the same thing okay so here it will be checking in the form if there is a name in the name field of this as an error it will go ahead and do this so so let's go ahead and uh, so here it will be null okay so let's go ahead and uh, do what and check if it has errors okay if it has errors all right so you can go ahead and say i'm um, just trying to think so i'm going to check if error is no longer null so i'll come here near the form itself okay near the form here i check if the error is not what is not null 
so on classes i'll add uh maybe uh, uh here in classes i can add uh um, let me first see how i can do the the error class let me see if i can how i can do first how i can first do the error class let me first here yeah. is invalid will it work for us yes is invalid is working for us okay so i check if there is an error if the error is no longer null I go ahead on classes here no classes are going to be added there. i add the class called is invalid okay is invalid uh so what how am i going to present the error i go ahead and let me see uh, 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 uh. Let me go ahead and make some error. So I'm going to explain this, don't worry. Just put here. I think, yeah, I think that can work for us. Okay. Yeah, I think that can work for us. Okay, so let me explain it. So here, next to the form, we shall always have we shall always have what we shall always um have this class called uh i mean we shall always have this div called invalid feedback okay invalid feedback so it will be just having an error okay so if there's an error it will automatically show up if there's no error it will not show anything i think that's all uh, i think that's all then maybe lastly lastly we can go ahead and add maybe uh here maybe attributes something like that so if attributes someone ha wants to pass attributes like the way you see we had autofocus here we can go ahead and pass those attributes so let's create here another variable called attributes so that's how you create dynamic things attributes and you see this thing will help us so much as we proceed so attributes i go ahead and check if there is attributes okay if there's attribute i go ahead and receive them so i come and put them here they should be at the very last end okay so now if i want to for example to do autofocus i can just simply come here in register find this to be my automatic autofocus then put attributes and then make it autofocus something like that so if i come and refresh you see here it is doing autofocus so it means that that attribute has been added at the end yeah i think that's that's enough uh that's that can be enough maybe this kind of design we can put maybe something like called extra html and then you put here at the end but we can get rid of that let's just leave that for now all right so um oh we should add it ah, let's leave it for now let's leave it let's proceed back to business so there we go so everything is now fine everything is now fine now we can proceed Hello, my lesbian messages. Can you, hello, I'm unable to see what you're typing. Uh, really? Let me reshare again. Let me share my screen again. Entire screen. Okay. Well, can you tell if I can see now? Put in the chat if you can now see. So, alright. So, there we go. Now everything is okay. So, if I come here and refresh everything is fine put in the chat if you can now see what i'm typing glory morning glory all right so that is it that's it let's proceed uh so now uh let's go ahead and do now the one for password so you see now the beauty is let me just first go ahead and explain this one more time so it is we've just created a functions file uh, on top of functions file, we are starting the session. If the session is not started, uh -huh. then we go ahead and put our important function. The first function that we have put is called text input. This text input, we shall be using it to present HTML. So we have here some variables that are dynamic. For example, we shall be sending some data through session. Okay, so I just use this form data session. 
also shall also be sending some errors through session and i have done it like this you can pause the video and be able to understand then here some errors will be coming i mean some information will be coming straight from what from the form so you can pause this and understand how it is and then i'll make sure that the name is set if the name is not set and i'll make sure someone always pass an array if there is not an array it will go ahead and throw an error and if the name is not set it will also throw an error so i go ahead and check also for invalid okay so invalid if invalid uh, i mean for the class if, the, if there is an invalid if invalid is not null i go ahead and make something red i add in classes i put classes danger and then we shall have something that is read like that so you can you can pause the video or you must first watch the first video in order to understand everything here so there we go so we can now proceed now if i want to uh to flex, let's go back now to register a file so you see now instead of writing all this garbage i'm just going to remove it okay instead of writing all these things of h of uh what of, of password i'm just going to remove it and just replace it with this one okay so i'm going to replace it with this one okay so i'm just going to simply say uh here i'm going to put password okay so um i've just duplicated this one eh? so you see password so you see uh, what would the advantage is what the advantage is so i'm just removing all this and remove it so i just replace it with this text input you see that's the whole point so i put your password so i can make this one name to be password so here i remove autofocus but i put the what the type okay the type here is important so you can make type to be password okay uh so we can add attributes attributes for example attributes you can add an attributes of required okay so come and put here and put for example uh required make sure that you begin with space so it cannot touch another thing required so something like that you see i can also come here and make this form to be required something like that so someone will submit with it so if i come here and refresh you see i'm having password here which is so nice like password is already there without without too much pain so that is so beautiful uh that is so so beautiful see that uh, let me first see if this one was wrapped in something before I proceed. Uh, so password, was it wrapped in something? I think, yeah, there is password toggle. Ah, that's not necessary for now. All right, so that's it. So that's it, you see, that is it. So yeah, that's nice. Uh, so here, yeah, click on password, text me there. All right, so let's proceed. Let's go back to functions. Uh, okay, this is the label MB. So I can make MB always to be two. <laughs> yeah, I want this space below to be seen more last space. Let's make it one. Yeah, let's make it one. So someone, if they want to add, they can add on their own by using BR or maybe MB bottom. So we proceed now. After doing that, the next thing that we're going to do, uh, let's go back to our input. So we have password. Now, what which field do you need to when you're registering someone? We're going to collect first name. So I'll just simply copy this. We're going to collect first name, last name. No, we're going to collect name. That will be first and last name. And then uh, we're going to collect name, then the email, then passwords. That's all. That's all we will collect. So let's come here on top of this and collect the name. So here the label is going to be you see the beauty we just pass here now what you want so i can put here full name full name so uh the name here can be name name and then this is the one that's going to be autofocus then we remove the autofocus from here we make it required okay so after doing so we proceed uh we proceed uh to enter your name your email so we can make this one to be email only so let us accept email and then we can put here the type to be email so let's put here type uh type to be email something like that and that's all uh -huh. then we we'll put here first password and then lastly re-enter password so this can be password 
maybe password two that can be the name password two okay so you can say uh re enter password uh-huh confirm password something like that that's all that's all so if i come here and refresh so that is our form of registration if i click now on register you see it is saying i should re-enter i should enter my name all right so that's it that's it okay now let's go ahead and do the logic okay so i'll go ahead and put here for example my name mohindo okay let's just go ahead and put there some other things like that like that so it will not accept something that is not an email put password put password again okay so i put let me put wrong things so i can put remember me and then says register so you see it's not accepting email so i'm put here my email then submit so it is submitting you see it is submitting so it is doing the other logic that we did yesterday now you see it is submitting so now we're going to begin now the logic of registering someone so let's go back to our what to our input i mean to our form on top here remember the logic of registration and doing it here on top as how we discussed yesterday so you see it is now triggering this so if i want to display the data that has been sent so i can just simply say uh, i can just simply say echo say pre and then come here and do printer and then i put the post post and then die okay so save if i come and refresh now you'll see i submit again the data you see that the data has come the name is okay the username is okay the passwords are okay so everything is beautiful okay so let's just do some small validation then after that validation we proceed to now the real registration okay the real registration not the real input the real data inserting okay so let's do validation i see time is over but let's just do the validation and we call it a day so how are we going to do the validation okay so now when i receive the form when i receive the form this is going to, this is going to be the latest form what i'm going to be doing first immediately when i receive the form i'm going to get every data that is in here in the post and i put it in the data um, and i put it in the and i put it in the session data okay of the form so let me come here to functions so when i receive the form immediately to avoid losing data i'm going to be putting it i'm going to be putting it here in the session so that someone should not lose data in this session data Okay, so I'll just simply come here. Already the session is already started in this function of I mean this file of functions. So I just simply begin by putting the post data there. So the data will not be lost. Okay, and remember the data is in array and it is having the name and the rest, something like that. Okay, so now let's say what we're going to validate. First of all, we're going to make sure the name is okay. By but the name is okay because I've already validated from front end. Maybe we can validate the email and okay, so let's validate the email. Let's validate the email. At least the email is validated. Email equals to username. So I'm going to validate the email. So to validate the email, you just simply say uh, so this is the function the inbuilt function php inbuilt function that we use to validate emails just simply say filter variable and then you pass the email and then you say filter validate email you write exactly as it is here uh, now if there is an error you see if there's an error i just simply say error in username remember we are using username this side so don't miss mix the things we are using the username as the name so don't confuse them okay However, you can use anything, but here, just a matter of making sure that you don't be fake, forget, you're using the username. So, you see, if I have an error, I just simply say session in the section of errors, put the session in the name of username, and then say put invalid email address, something like that. But remember that that has been saved. So, after doing like that, let me stop echoing here. Okay, let me just go ahead and 
redirect back okay redirect back okay so i just simply say header a header and then put location and then i put register.php so here i'll have redirected back okay and remember it's going to go with this error in the sessions and the error will be displayed accordingly all right so after doing that i make sure that i do not it don't it does not proceed here so i die or you can just simply do what exit the system i mean exit the, 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 the program immediately. so our time is up so let's go ahead and try that so if i come here and but the email is valid so we don't we don't expect a redirection so let's first get here so i refresh the email is valid uh it redirected okay it just brought back the data so they everything is okay because i did not die on top there so everything is okay so what we're going to validate next we're going to validate uh the what we're going to validate the the username okay the username i mean sorry the password if the passwords don't match let's validate if password password don't match so let's go ahead and get uh password one equals to uh the one of password so it's how i'm getting the data in the in the post and then you say password two equals that so let us check if the password are not are not the and uh or not okay if they so I just simply say if password are not matching so i just go ahead and check if password one is not equal to password two i go ahead and say in session of errors put in the password section say passwords are not do not match okay passwords do not match and then i redirect back using location header location php so if it goes beyond here you can just simply say echo uh pre tag say maybe and then i go ahead and dump whatever we want to so i know passwords don't match let's see if our error will work so let's go ahead and refresh so we lost the data oh my god we lost the data and it did not display the error okay so uh, let's see if we are doing it the right way so session has started let's first see if there is anything in session let's see if there's anything in session printer and then die just simply come here and put echo uh -huh, let's try and refresh and see see the data is in session even the error is in session but i don't know why it's not displaying it let's see so you have form errors and you have password yes and the data is also there so i don't know why let's let's find out let's find out and then we call it a day uh, let's find out so let's go to our, our function so our function is here let me see if session uh, so you come here if form data is in session of a field so I just let me first go ahead and die from here and see if it will stop from there for refresh yes it's stopping from there so why is it not setting the value okay so let me go ahead and echo and just die with this value and you see why is it not displaying the value let's see let's find out so you see the value is null oh yeah so the problem is here the problem is here so you have to be form data not form you see this is the problem so this is form data and this is going to be form errors so that is the error that we have been doing so i hope now we should be able to restore our data so now everything let's but still did not work uh, let's find out why so if it's set should do this let me just first uh, echo pre tag let me first echo the let me first die with this session and I, I mean with this value and we see let's finish this so that tomorrow we start with the database 
sorry it's another language refresh it is not coming why if you said session the name let's see why is data not coming and define key so the keys are undefined let's first see form data session if is set session and then I die here Then why is it saying it is set? It's not set. Uh -huh. So I have your form data. Hmm. So I have your form data. It is there. See so form data is there. Let's go ahead and and uh, display the name. Maybe the name is not coming properly. So you have form data and the name is here, it's an array. Oh yeah, I see the problem. I see the problem, I see the problem, I see the problem. So, <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah, I see the problem. So the problem is we are doing these things on top before we set the name. You see the name is still null. So I have to do these things after we have determined the name. So yeah, I have to be here. So this is where we are determining the name. Okay. Then you have to do these things maybe here after say, checking the name is not now. So that is where we have to do these things from. So yeah, everything should be now be fine. Refresh. Boom. Everything is okay. So you see, everything is okay. Only that I see everything is having an error. I don't know why. Okay, so I don't know why. Okay, so when do we set session error? <coughs> Check if. Okay, so. I see everything is bringing an error. So error. Form errors. So how did you set this error on top here? Form errors, so if it is here, it is in password. Mm -hmm. So, form error. If you said form errors, just put this one here. I think it will help. Let's refresh. If you set from error and that, yeah, everything is now fine. Everything is now fine. Yeah. Okay, so if the presentation is not visible, don't worry, you shall share the video. So everything is fine. So we had to first check also this. If it's not set, then you go ahead and reset. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, that's it. That's it. So now tomorrow we we'll start from there. So if I go ahead and put here for this one, and I put correct passwords, then put something that's I put correct passwords. Password not match. So if I go ahead and put correct ones, see they are matching. Now everything is okay. Uh huh. So if I put something that doesn't match. And then submit you see it turning me back with the values there and there so that's it that's it for today i'm going to send this code so you can also be able to download it so let me go ahead and put on github and then push however i recommend you to create your own code i recommend you to create your own code 
so that's it for today let's meet tomorrow and uh, we do the data insertion in the database goodbye see you